Been waiting to try these for a little while now, but they finally arrived. From what I've seen on these, there should be a little switch on the back that allows you to switch between the Type A or the Type B joystick. I've been really lazy about trying to get these, and I finally saw a flash sale on AliExpress. However, when I grabbed it, it was about $25 Canadian, and then when I went to check out, the charge immediately went to like $34. I have no idea why it went like that, but anyways. Let's take a closer look at see how to install these and if it was worth the wait or if it's definitely not something that I would recommend. Let's give these a try and see how that goes. Is it worth installing these on your Steam Deck if you already have good working joysticks and was it worth 34 Canadian for me to try these? Well, let's take a closer look and find out. Now I'll admit, I really haven't been playing my Steam Deck very much with my ROG Ally in hand, but this definitely has its pros and cons, and I still use the unit. Still absolutely love the Steam Deck. A couple weeks ago, I actually grabbed these joystick caps from Dbrand, and I think they've been really enhancing the gameplay experience overall. This is kind of the reason why I wanted to upgrade the Steam Deck, is because now that I like these a lot more, I've decided to keep the unit. I was kind of on the fence if I was going to sell this device or keep it, but overall, I'm still really happy with it, and I think it's got a lot of life left. It's not necessarily the height, they're really good joysticks, but for some reason the top on the stock joystick is just really slippery and it kind of marks easy too so this kind of eliminates the the concern i've had for that something this isn't going to fix though here is the wear around the joystick now unfortunately because valve did not include a anti-friction ring around the opening here around the joystick this is pretty common to see because this has been wearing off on the joystick here as i rotate my joystick around you can kind of feel the grittiness of it and it's not the most pleasant feeling i have to admit this is kind of getting worse and i've tried cleaning this off with a q-tip and rubbing alcohol but i can't get the rest of this off this is actually permanently grinded into the joystick cap as far as smooth rotation goes the gully kick controller still tops the list and that's because they've added this nice anti-friction ring around the joystick there's actually no wear on the joystick still and this has been my primary controller ever since my 8-bit do ultimate bluetooth died it's going to be nice having a new set of joystick caps and well just new joysticks in general on this thing as the wear around mine has been kind of degrading over time. This will probably also degrade on this one as well but at least for a little while it's going to be nice. However it's still a really good unit and overall it's just something that I've noticed over my time using the Steam Deck. But anyways, I guess we might as well install these and see how hard it is. I've been putting off this for a while as mentioned, but let's just go ahead and install them and see how it goes. Before I open the unit here, I definitely want to make sure that these don't click when I'm rotating them. That was a big concern on the V1s that they had made for the Steam Deck, but I don't think I should have that issue with these here. Let's open it up and just give it a once over before we go ahead and install these. Let's open the box and take a peek inside. There's no tools that come in the box for installation get our two joysticks and that's it let's try this left one here first just to see how it goes that's pretty smooth wow these are really smooth i'm liking what i'm seeing so far let's try the other one yeah that one seems really smooth too nice before we open our unit, we do need to check what kind of joysticks that we're already using in this device. I'm pretty sure since this is a launch model that this has the Type A, but since I'm unsure, let's turn it on and double check. From the settings menu, go to the systems tab, then scroll down until you see model and serial numbers. At the very top of the list, you're going to see the joysticks, and it says that mine has Type A. Once we know what joystick types we have, we can shut off the unit and go ahead to installing the new ones. Wait for the unit to fully power off before opening it. I'm also going to have to take off these joystick caps as I need to pull them through the opening and that might get in the way. But yeah, you can see the wear on the joystick there. Wow. I'm pretty good with my units too, but since it's a soft rubber, it does mark quite easily. This does kind of come off with a little bit of water and just if you just rub it, but still. It actually didn't look this bad before I put the joystick caps on. I'm kind of wondering if this has something underneath it. Oh, it does. This did not look that bad before I put these joystick caps on, but if you look underneath the cap, 
you can kind of see what it's been doing. That's kind of a shame. So if I put these on the new ones, it's probably just going to do that to this thing all over again. Well, that's a shame. Well, I guess it is what it is. You're going to need to get a guitar pick or a pry tool. And then you're going to have to get a small Phillips screwdriver to take these screws out. I've never taken this apart before, so I have no idea what to expect. I got a small Phillips screwdriver here, a pry tool that I got from probably an extreme rate kit, and a pair of plastic tweezers. This is generally all I need when working on electronics. First things first, let's get these screws out. If the screwdriver you're using isn't working very good, you probably need a different size bit. This one doesn't seem to be working well on these bottom two here, and I don't want to strip the screws, so I'm going to grab a different one. I'm going to try this one here. I think this one should fit. All right, let's get back to opening the device. There's a couple different size screws here. Make sure you make note of which ones go where. I generally like to put the screws right outside of the hole so I can kind of see which one went where. And with that, we've removed all the screws. Now we just have to open the back plate. Generally, what I find works really well is to just start behind this trigger here because you don't want to start from one of the seams. That's a good way to nick the edge of the device. Right, I'm going to try to get this open. Wish me luck. It looks like most of the top came open here, but the side is still kind of stuck. I was kind of hesitant to do that because your hand kind of goes along here and I don't want to nick that. Let me try the other side. I still have this mostly open here up top, so I'm just going to start from here this time. I guess I'm going to probably have to go around the edge here. Uh, I really don't want to nick that. With the top part open, I just kind of stuck my fingernail here and just pulled and it seemed to open a little bit. So I'm wondering if I can just do the same thing and get that. Oh, that didn't sound good. Well, I didn't break anything, so that's always a good sign. All right, so now that I know those edges open up pretty easy, I'm gonna take the little pry tool here and I'm gonna try to open it with one of these. All right, so me and my infinite wisdom did not think to check the bottom, but once the sides kind of open, if you look down on the bottom, well, it's kind of open down here too. I'm just gonna take my little plastic tool here, run along the edge, and it should open. Ooh, we also want to take out the micro SD card too. Don't leave that in there, especially if you have an expensive one. Once you got most of the clips opened, it should come off pretty easy. I think mine's about ready to come off here. And I've already nicked the edge. It's a pretty soft plastic, mostly fixed. I ran my little plastic spudger tool around the edge and it seems to be fine. I think it's open, so let's take the back off. That wasn't bad, but I think I could have done better a second time now knowing how I opened it. Start at the top, work your way along the sides with a plastic pry tool and it should come out pretty easy. The bottom's definitely the last thing that you want to pop off. Looks like there's a few screws here holding this heat plate down, so we're just going to take that one off. Looks like there's one right here, so we'll do that one too, then it should come off. While I got this open, I'm going to go ahead and put my ROG Ally M2 in there because why not? I only have a 256 in there right now, so I was relying a little bit off my micro SD card, but it'll be nice to offload most of it to the internal storage. I think this is actually a little quicker than the stock M2 in the Steam Deck as well, so it should be a nice boost. The M2 looks to be a little bit different than installing it on the ROG Ally as it's got a little bit of shielding over it, but we'll just slip that right over top of this and it should be fine. Before we do anything internally though, let's disconnect the battery. It's right here. Use your plastic tool to push it over and it should come right off. Then again, if you have really, really cheap tweezers, just use your fingernails. And that thing's really in there. Looks like the iFixit guide actually pulls on this cable, so I'm going to try that. Definitely usually wouldn't do that, but I guess since it's got a little bit of material around it, it's probably okay. Let's go ahead and remove the M2 drive next. Gotta take the shielding off. Looks like it just slides right off there. There we go. Slide the new one in. Done. Right, so the hard drive's in. Let's get those joysticks out next. Joysticks look to be pretty simple. There's only one ribbon cable here, and they even have little pull tabs on them. 
and then just go ahead and pull it out. There's three screws here that hold it into place. We gotta take those out before we can pull it out. I'm just gonna lift this out here slowly. That was the left one, so let's grab the left joystick. Here's the gully kit one that we're gonna be putting in. Let's drop that straight in there. Nice. There we go. Let's get those screws in next. Next, we just gotta attach the ribbon cable here. Make sure the lock is flipped up, then put the ribbon cable in place. This is the switch that I'm referring to. Just make sure that you have it set to the correct model. So that's perfect. That's what we need to set it to. At least my model. Yours might be the B model. It all depends. But there's the switch and it's easy to switch. The left one out. All we have left to do is the right one. Let's take that out next. There we go. Let's lift this off carefully here. Just gotta make sure you get the screws out the whole way. Oddly enough, my right joystick was set to B for some reason, and my left joystick was set to A, so I'm gonna have to flip this over to A. There we go. Let's drop that back into place and install it. Something interesting I'm noticing about the right side here is this little cable is so close to the edge as you rotate it, it almost clicks. I'm gonna put this into place and then we're gonna check to see if this little cable here is clicking on this edge. All right, let's try the joystick here. Yeah, it is clicking. Oh, that sounds terrible. I'm gonna do my best to show this on film here, but this is pretty difficult to show. So watch between this little opening here and you'll see the cable click. This is creating a very audible click and it sounds terrible. So I can do one of two things. I can try to push this cable up against the joystick or I can cut the cable completely. That would obviously ruin the haptic feedback, but in all honesty, I don't use it anyways, so that's not the end of the world for me. If I do sell this down the road though, that might bother the person who buys it. What I'm gonna try here is gonna put a small piece of electrical tape just on the edge so it holds it into place against the joystick. That should fix the issue, I think. Let's give it a try. Okay, so this is what it looks like once I've got the tape on there. I've gone over the edge here, right underneath this little black clip thing. I pushed it down, it's right on the edge, so it's nice and tight down near the bottom. Then as we go around the corner here, I just pushed it straight onto the PCB. This should stop that cable from going over the edge and causing that clicking sound. Let's see if there's any clicking. Absolute pure silence. I love it. If you're getting clicking gully kit sticks, try that. I think that'll fix your problem. Couple things we need to do before we close the back of the unit. Let's go ahead and plug this back in here. Before we put the shielding or this top part here, we need to plug in the battery. I almost forgot, so let's put that in next. Now we can go ahead and put the shielding on. Just make sure to not forget that battery. If you're unsure which screws to put in, just check the outside back plate. If it looks like there's a hole on the back plate, that means don't put the screw there. I've gone ahead and double checked to make sure all the screws have been put in that we need to put back in. Once that's done, and you kind of put that silver shielding over the other one, we can put the back plate on. We're gonna start at the bottom and then hinge it down. All right, so let's put that on next. You should hear a loud click once it's in place. Then just grab your screwdriver and put the screws in the back. And with that, we're done. The right joystick here was absolutely terrible. I'm not sure why, but for some reason, this entire joystick cap was kind of like popped out. So I had to push it in and then rotate it. And it seems okay now. The left one was fine though, but yeah, this right one, that, that was terrible. Next, we're gonna have to go to the Steam Deck recovery page. I'll leave a link to this in the description below. We're gonna have to download the recovery image, which is right here. While we're letting that download, it's gonna give you a couple instructions. We're gonna use Rufus to write that to a USB. 
I don't have any USB drives, but I do have a lot of micro SD cards. So I'm going to use this little Kingston adapter along with a micro SD card, and I'm just going to write the image to that. I am going to need a little adapter though to connect that to the Steam Deck. That's okay though, I have one here. I've gone ahead and selected my drive in Rufus Portable, then the recovery image. Make sure your drive is formatted to FAT32, then just click start. This may take a little while, but once it's done, it'll be ready to install on the Steam Deck. Plug that into the Steam Deck and let's go ahead and boot this into the BIOS. At this point, all we have to do now is to hold the volume up and the power. Pressing the volume up and the power button should get you in a BIOS. Then all we have to do is head over to the boot manager here, select the USB, and this will take us through our install process. This might take a little while, just be patient with it while it loads all the files. We need to select re-image Steam Deck, so go ahead and do that now. It's going to say this is permanent, are you sure you want to do it? Just go ahead and say yeah, I want to do it. This may take a little while as well as it has to reinstall the OS and partition the hard drive. Give it a little bit, but it shouldn't take too too long. This obviously depends on the speed of your micro SD card and the drive that you installed. When the re-imaging is complete, we can go ahead and select proceed. This should restart the Steam Deck into our new installation. We can also remove the micro SD card or SD now. From here, it's just a basic setup. This next part here takes a long time. There's a lot of updates here to go, so just leave it for a good 30, 30-ish minutes, maybe a little bit more. It can take upwards of an hour, I've heard. Once this is done, it should reboot back into the setup wizard and we should be good to go. We still have to recalibrate our joysticks though as well once we get in there. Installing the Allies 512 on the Steam Deck gets us about 460 gigs of free storage. It's not bad. I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot more now that I have more room on the internal storage. Go ahead and switch to desktop mode so we can calibrate our joysticks. If you type in thumbstick underscore cal in the console, it should come up with this calibration. And there you go. Were the Hall Sensor upgrades worth it? Do you find the V2s a little different than the original ones that they released that required some soldering? And if you upgraded the hard drive, what size did you go for? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.